So I was rereading One Piece and I noticed that Gorosei Warcury says he must not be allowed to run loose for long when talking about Luffy. The interesting thing here is that this is all the way back in Jaya. This means that the Gorosei have known about Luffy for over two years and never killed him. Why and how did they not kill Joy Boy even though he's the very man that threatens the entire Celestial Dragon's reign? Something here doesn't add up. Wizard of War is here today and in this video I'm going to explain to you why I believe Shanks is the reason they haven't killed Luffy yet, how Shanks was able to make a proper deal with them to protect Luffy, why Shanks talked to the Gorsi about Blackbeard, and what would happen if the deal was broken off. Somehow you guys everything in this theory connects and I believe that it was foreshadowed all the way back since the beginning. And yes you guys this is my new channel and Preach and I did part our own ways for our own separate reasons however I still love the guy and I'll probably still be collabing with him very soon. And yeah this is my new channel so subscribe if you guys still want to see my content and and my theories, my videos, pretty much anything, uh, streams, anything that I'll be doing like that. And yeah, I'll be posting it all on here from now. Also, subscribe with the notification bell turned on if you guys want to see my next video, which is going to be on how Saint Saturn will probably die on Egghead and how Figurland will become the next Gorosei. But yeah, so anyways, going back to the Gorosei and Shanks. First off, I want to point out that it'd be a plot hole if the Gorosei and Emu didn't kill Luffy from the get-go, since it doesn't seem like they have a problem wiping out entire races like the Buccaneers and Lunarians. They also have shown to be capable of wiping out entire islands like Ohara and Lulucia, and potentially even Egghead. I mean, they even went as far as erasing an entire century from history, which included the very man who eventually returned in the form of Luffy. Like, why would they allow Luffy to live when they clearly show that they don't want anyone knowing anything about Nika or the Void Century? All of these questions lead me to my next point, which is the fact that the Gorsei always knew the Gumma Gumma no Mi was actually the Nika fruit, and I find it interesting that they would allow the very boy who ate that fruit survive. When you also add the fact that the Gorsei say, what if I told you that there was a potential future that would make us beg for this outcome? It is always better to eliminate dangerous variables. After a different Gorsei asked, what was the point of losing an elite agent and making Kaido angry. This proves that they think the outcome of Nika surviving is way more dangerous than the outcome of Kaido and Big Mom going against the world government. When you put this into perspective, it's actually insane since Kaido and Big Mom are two of the strongest people in the entire world. Like somehow Nika's existence alone is such a worse outcome that it's incomparable. I believe that this shows that they always knew of Luffy's potential, however, this puts up the question, why did they never kill Luffy when he was a youngling in the Grand Line? Well, that's where we get to my next point, which is that they couldn't kill him because of shame. Something that really seems to hint to the Gorsei not killing Luffy because they don't want to make Shanks mad is when we see that in Wano they command that Straw Hat Luffy be eliminated at once. The thing that makes this very sus is since the Gorsei also say when Kaido and Big Mom are involved in a fight, death could easily come for anyone, which makes it the perfect cover to eliminate inconveniences. They say this right before talking about how Luffy is the new sun god Nika, which makes it pretty obvious that they were talking about Luffy. The quote, which makes it the perfect cover to eliminate inconveniences, seems to prove that they tried using Big Mom and Kaido as cover to them being the ones who are trying to eliminate Luffy. I don't know how you guys take this and maybe I'm wrong, but to me I get the impression that they don't want the people or more specifically Shanks finding out that they were responsible for Luffy's death. Like it seems like they were planning on labeling it as Kaido. It seems like they want Luffy to die but at the same time don't want to be the ones labeled as the killers. I personally think that they specifically don't want Shanks to find out what they did because if he did, a deal that they made with him would be off and he would cause them great destruction. I'll get to exactly what that deal is in a bit, however the reason I think this is because the Gorsei themselves say if we just allow Red Hair to run Amic unchecked, it will be difficult for us to contain the possible consequences back when they found out Shanks was beating with Whitebeard. I feel like that line seems to hint that they may have Shanks in check and that they might have some control over his actions. I feel like their checkmate card would be Luffy and if Shanks ever did anything that severely hurt the world government, the Gorsei would immediately cut the deal off and would take care of of the future son god Nika. Also, I do realize that the world government almost arrested and even almost killed Luffy on multiple occasions, like when Kizaru's high ass came into Sabayori, when Luffy declared war in his lobby, and when Magellan had Luffy on the verge of death and impaled down. The reason I think this doesn't matter though is because if you take a look at all these instances, they're all because of what Luffy did himself. Like all of these things happened because Luffy did something in the first place. Even at Marineford, Akainu, who seems to be the only marine with common sense, tried killing Luffy because he was afraid of what he could become in the future. Even then though, it was Luffy's fault for being at Marineford and it's not the Gorsi's fault that he almost died. If Luffy actually did die there, they'd probably honestly just tell Shanks that he just got caught up in the crossfire. And also knowing how the Gorsi only make deals with someone if they're the ones who win it, I feel like the only way they negotiated with Shanks is by saying that they won't necessarily send anyone after Luffy, however if he gets captured or dies on his own and due to his own actions, there's nothing they can do about it. That would explain why they try to use Big Mom and Kaido as cover as to them being the reason Luffy died. I mean, other 
Otherwise, it just wouldn't make sense as to how they allowed the men who ate the Nika fruit survive for this long, when we know that they killed their own men for even knowing about Nika's existence. Also, if this is Shanks' real relationship with the Gorsei, then I think it'd be a pretty sweet parallel with Ace and Whitebeard. In case you forgot, Sengoku says that the only reason they didn't capture Ace right when they learned about his lineage was because Whitebeard protected him. Maybe the only reason Luffy wasn't killed right off the bat was because Shanks was protecting him. I mean, if someone protected Roger's lineage from going extinct, I'd only assume that someone had to protect Nika's legacy from ending. And so now that I explained how the Gorsei may have negotiated the deal on their end, what would Shanks have had to do for them? Because there's just no way they would agree to something so risky without receiving something on their end. Well, the thing that I believe Shanks has been doing for them is help maintain the world's balance. We continuously see the Gorsei talk about how their top priority is to maintain the balance of the world for as long as they can. We see them say things like, we must maintain the balance of the three gay powers. After Croc's defeat, we should wait for further developments in the new world. The balance of power among the pirates will be shifting soon. We must pick the ones who have the greatest influence after the Marineford War and that the balance of the world cannot be maintained forever. It seems like there is a need for a great cleansing during the reverie. With that last quote, it seems like if the world isn't imbalanced, then they feel like they have to wipe people out or make it where the world bows down to them. I believe they want balance in the world, so then it's easier for them to rule. I mean, Oda confirmed in Road to Laugh Tale that the three gay powers have always remained in balance until Wano. This may show that the highest in the government prefer the balance of the world instead of chaos. It also seems like the Gorsei tries to have everyone else do everything for them while they sit in their room discussing politics. Like, it seems like they don't ever want to go out and fight themselves unless they absolutely have to. Also, the fact that they've never conquered the new world or really threatened it at all makes me think that they absolutely have no control over the Yonko and Strong Islands. Like, there's no way they allowed Rocks to build up his legendary crew and attempt to become the king of the world, and then Roger to become king of the pirates and learn the entire truth of the world. Like, I feel like if they could control those dudes, they would, but I think they simply just don't have the power to do it. This is why I think they need Shanks, because he's the only guy who can simply talk to the Yonko whilst also having them respect his strength. Like, I believe that Shanks is the peacemaker or balancer with the Yonko since he's able to stop Yonko like Blackbeard and Kaido from fighting the world government. I mean, time and time again, we see how Shanks tries to civically negotiate peace, like when he tells Whitebeard to stop Ace from going to Blackbeard, because he knows it'll end badly. On top of this, later on we see Shanks stopping the very war that was caused to the Ace flight in Blackbeard. We also see him somehow stop Kaido from going to Marineford, which would have caused way more chaos than what already happened in Marineford. I know it seems like he saved the Whitebeard pirates when he stopped the war, but in a way, he actually saved the entire world government and the balance between the three gate powers, because I don't know how they would have stopped Kaido, King, the Whitebeard fleet, Blackbeard with the Gurgur and Nomi, and Blackbeard Pirates on top of that. Like, they literally would have had to fight three Yonko in one day, and I just don't think they would have won that unless they brought in Holy Knights or Gorsei or something. Actually, they would have had to fight four Yonko at once since Shanks and his crew told everyone at Marineford to take it out on them if they wanted to continue fighting. Without Shanks' peacemaking abilities, who knows what would have happened at Marineford? It also seems like Shanks always specifically tries to stop Yonko out of everyone, like he never tries to stop warlords like Mihawk or Yonko commanders like Ace from doing anything. He specifically he goes head to head with other Yonko and I feel like he does that because that's the deal that he made to keep the Yonko in balance. Now if you still don't think that Shanks makes his moves to help the Gorsei maintain the balance throughout the world and instead does it for his own personal reasons then check this out. So now in Oda's Road to Laugh Tale he states word for word a dormant lion makes quiet moves to maintain the world's balance when talking about Shanks. This right here proves that the reason Shanks makes these quiet and secretive moves is literally to maintain the balance between the Yonko and the world. I also wonder if Shanks started the Gorsei with being able to expose the ancient kingdom since we see that all the books from Ohara are now in Elbaf. Like Vegapunk confirms, if you research those books, you can learn everything that Ohara learned and I wonder if an Elbaf giant told Shanks everything. I don't know, this may be a little bit of a stretch, however, you never know. Like, still though, I mainly think the deal was made with the fact that Shanks will keep the world in balance. Also, I know that a lot of people think that Shanks is a a traitor or a rat, and despite the funny memes, I don't think Shanks is actually a rat or a traitor, like, I know his dad is a high class celestial dragon, who's allowed to execute celestial dragons on sight, however, I don't think Shanks likes his dad, or is like his dad at all. If the Gorsei were to work with Shanks, I don't think it'd be because of his lineage, and something that should prove this is the fact that he's a Yonko, former Roger pirate, and a man who stole the Gumma Gumma no Mi. Like you guys, straight up, there's no way the Gorsei would be friendly with a guy like that unless he brought something to the table. I mean, in Dressrosa we see that the celestial dragons won't allow Doflamingo's family to return to Marijua, and they won't even allow Dofi to return after he's brought his father's head with him. So I don't think it crazy to think that they also wouldn't allow Shanks to return since he betrayed them when he sold the Gamma Gamma no Mi and since he was once a Roger pirate. 
it. I mean, we even see that the government wanted to kill Tom just for building the Oro Jackson, so I think that they also would want all the Roger Pirates dead. Like, it seems more likely that Shanks is able to meet up with the Gorsei because of some sort of deal that they made or due to some sort of negotiations, rather than Shanks being evil and a traitor, or just because of his lineage. I mean, we've seen other good characters make deals with the Gorsei, like Kuma and Vegapunk, and it actually seems like Shanks making a deal with the Gorsei to protect Luffy is paralleled with Kuma making a deal with Saturn to protect Bonnie. Luffy reminds Shanks of a dead loved one since he has the same dream as Roger, whilst Bonnie reminds Kuma of a dead loved one too. RIP Guinea, by the way. Kuma made a deal with the Gorsei just to save Bonnie's life, just like how I think Shanks did. Kuma made pacifistas, or peacemakers, to pay off his debt with Bonnie's procedure, just like how Shanks might have maintained balance and peace throughout the world to protect Luffy. Kuma sacrificed his body, just like how Shanks did in Chapter 1. Kuma praised the sun god Nika, just like how Shanks always praises Luffy. Kuma even taught Bonnie about Nika, just like how Shanks is the reason Luffy became Nika. Bonnie went out of sea to find Kuma, just like how one of the reasons Luffy went out of sea was to reunite with Shanks. And now, unlike Kuma, I don't think the Gorsei only made the deal with Shanks because of what he'd do for them, but I also think they made it because they don't want to fight him at all. Notice how they say, true indeed, after a marine tells them, even the idea of contact between Whitebeard and Red Hair is too dangerous. Another thing is that, in the anime translation, the Gorsei say, Red Hair is formidable only when agitated, which to me proves, as long as you don't piss him off, he won't do anything to you. I believe both of these statements prove that they don't want to fight Shang since if they did, their entire world government might be completely destroyed. Like, I'm not trying to say that the Shanks pirates would win, however, I do believe that if they fall a full out war, there wouldn't be much of a government remaining afterwards. This also takes me to Shanks' parting road to Laugh Tale, where, in one translation it says, Shanks possesses such ferociousness that if we're made to go on a rage, he would be too much to handle according to the Gorosei. So, if you take this translation seriously, Shanks' power in the world is too much for the Gorosei to handle, and to connect it back to the theory, they wouldn't want to make him go on a rage since they wouldn't be able to stop him. The only problem with this is that the other translation of Road to Lafto says that the five elders have noted that Shanks can be threatening if pushed. When this man takes action, the ripples spread across the globe. Now, this translation doesn't necessarily say that Shanks is too much for the Gorsei to handle, however, it still pretty much confirms that they don't want to mess with him. I personally think that Shanks is the strongest in the entire world of One Piece, other than Emu, and I think that he's easily able to avoid destruction since when he takes action, the ripples spread across the world. I don't think he straight up bullied the Gorsei and told him that they better not kill Luffy or else he would kill them. I think him making a deal with them with the threat added into it makes the most sense. I also noticed that the deal may have been foreshadowed from this very first time that we see the Gorsei, since the very first thing that they ever talk about is Shanks and how Shanks is meeting up with a Yonko. This may only be a coincidence, however, I believe that this always foreshadowed Shanks and the Gorsei's relationship of maintaining balance and to top it all off. In this same chapter, the last thing the Gorsei say is how Luffy must not be allowed to run freely. This entire chapter may foreshadow that A, the Gorsei and Shanks have a mutual relationship, and B, that it's because of Luffy. I mean, this chapter did already low-key foreshadow Whitebeard's Tremor Tremor Fruit and the impact of him leaving the Yonko when Jupiter says, a rupture in the three great powers can cause a tremor that will shake the world. We must maintain the balance. This is the very chapter where we see Ace and learn something about Whitebeard for the first time, when both Buggy and the Gorsei talk about him, and of course Ace and Whitebeard were responsible for a tremor, or war, that shook the entire world, and of course Whitebeard literally has tremor powers. Now, even more from this chapter is that it really seems like the Gorsei know Shanks pretty well. Like, somehow they predicted that Shanks would send a messenger instead of show up himself. And they also say things like, he's not a man bent on trying to change the world. I feel like maybe they were able to predict what Shanks would do because what they said would happen falls in line with the deal. Now, another part of their deal or negotiations may have been from the time Shanks met the Gorsei during the Reverie. I feel like Shanks was talking about Blackbeard and why he thinks Blackbeard is a big issue. Like, if Shanks' job is to keep balance in the new world, then discussing how Blackbeard is a big threat to that balance makes too much sense. This would explain why Shanks was able to meet them on his own terms. The Gorsei probably understood that it was a very, very urgent meeting. And I mean, Blackbeard quite literally completely goes against everything that Shanks is trying to do to the world with keeping balance. For example, Shanks stopped the Marine Ford War, while well, you can argue that Blackbeard started it since he was the one who not only turned in Ace, but also was the reason Ace went after him in the first place. Shanks brings balance and peace to the world, while Blackbeard brings destruction and chaos. I feel like Shanks explained to the Gorsei that Blackbeard won't stop until he's at the top and that he feels like it's finally the time to fight him. He probably told him that although fighting another Yonko is the opposite of maintaining balance, allowing Blackbeard to remain alive will completely destroy the balance anyways in a much worse fashion. I honestly wonder if at this point, part of the deal is that 
If Shanks takes care of Blackbeard, then the Gorse won't go after Luffy. Of course, the Gorse broke this deal when they try to kill Luffy at Wano. However, as long as Shanks doesn't find out about that, they should be fine. And this idea of the Gorse breaking their promise really makes me think that in the end, Shanks will go against them. I feel like eventually there's gonna come a point where they just can't let Luffy run around freely anymore and where they have to straight up just go after the guy, especially if Luffy ends up defeating Saturn on Egghead. It's kind of ironic since the Gorse might finally take Luffy seriously as a pirate right around the same time as the world's balance comes to an end. And the Gorsei better hope that Blackbeard kills Shanks before Shanks comes after them, because just like how Oda said, Shanks can be threatening if pushed. He's been a dormant lion, and once that lion wakes up, his actions will cause ripples around the globe. Also, do you guys ever wonder what would happen if Shanks actually fought the Gorsei? Well, check out this video right here to see how I think it turned out.